All right, now I've got my brush. I've got my base color. You know you're, you're done with your base color when you can turn off your sketch and you still see a person. You know, there's not huge glaring areas missing. Um, his neck is kind of missing, but I'm gonna need reference for that. I think I just shortchanged his beard a little bit. I gave him a bit of a, a cleanup. Right, now I need reference, right? So I go to my reference and I open it up in Photoshop. Now that I've set up all my, my windows and my workspace, I need to set up my reference. So this is my major one. And then I'm gonna use slightly different reference for my finish, my refined paint layer, than I did for my base color. But I'm still gonna stick kind of with watercolor. Yeah. All right, so not too many, but a few examples. And then maybe something that's just crazy. I think I was using this one. Kind of outlandish color. All right, now I click on my original and I'm gonna go to Window and then Arrange. And then I'm gonna do three upstacked. So I have my painting here and then reference off to the right. This is how I usually prefer to do it. And I'm keeping them all in the same window now. I can move these. I wanna put my main reference here. And I can use the navigator and my command minus and command plus to kind of zoom in and show me. So he's framed nicely there. Then there's this one which I like and I'm gonna use mostly. Put it there. And then if I ever want the others, I just click on them. So I'll get those set up. And I can move nicely between. Now this will let me zoom in. And this is just interesting to see how they use the, the warm colors and the mid-tones, the cool colors and the shadows. And it basically shows, I think it's probably taken from a similar photo reference, um, but it shows some, some color heights by this other painter, this physical painter. All right, so now how do I set up? Well, I'm gonna stay on my painting. I wanna stay using the brush but I've changed the brush to be a little bit smaller now. So a little bit smaller than a pencil eraser, right? Not much smaller, but a little bit. And I'm going to lock my base color layer. And I'm going to make a new layer on top of it, which I call refined. Bless you. Paint. Okay, now this is how refined painting can work. though you don't want to deal with details too early. Refined painting works by using your navigator or using plus minus space bar and dragging or using your, your navigator just on its own, but always staying on the brush tool. And then using your palette, just do a slightly higher opacity. Now I'm going to start to paint in the direction. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller too. That goes with my subject. So if the if his eyelid is kind of sagging down like it is, I want to get that angle and that edge. He has a highlight in his eye. It's right here. I can put that in. Right? And then I can work around it.
stealing colors from myself. Now I'm going to change my brush setting a little bit, so it's a little bit more responsive. So I'm having to push a little bit harder than I want. All right. Yeah, that's much better. So now this is kind of like Van Gogh painting strokes. I want to layer color on top and I want to do it, this is my kind of style of painting, but I think it's helpful whether you're doing abstraction or representation. I want to kind of follow along with the shape of his head. So as I'm painting across his brow, I'm curving it along his forehead. I'm working above his eyelid, I'm curving it along with the skin. I'm working under his eyes. I'm trying to get somewhat of a mix of colors. And I'm trying to define some sharper edges. Now, if you're working from color photo reference, you can always just steal colors right from there. But that's where I use some of this art reference because I like to steal colors from um, not digital media, but traditional media. Now the texture on the brush is great, but if you don't tie it to the pressure of your pen, it basically just becomes a texture overlay. That's a little fake looking at the end. So as with most things digital, we use them where they're helpful and we try not to overuse them or we'd be suspicious of anything that's uh, not under our direct control. So the refined painting goes a little bit slower because you're working with a smaller brush in some smaller areas, kind of solving problems as you go, and then blending them back because you're not working at full opacity. So if you go too dark, you simply go over it with something a little bit lighter, but it will all help to build this texture and that's more interesting. And I'm constantly holding down option and stealing colors from myself. And it's so much easier than swapping uh, colors on your palette all the time. Or picking up a new crayon or a new marker. So there is nothing easier about digital, digital painting. It's all the same skills, all the same kind of training and observation. If you're good at traditional painting, you'll be good at digital painting, just using new tools and a new interface. But it is cleaner <laughs> and things go faster sometimes just because all of the colors are there for you all the time if you've set it up right. You don't have to waste time cleaning out your brush to load it with new paint. But it also has some drawbacks. The drawbacks are simply that you can always replace what you've done and always paint over. And the drawback of that is unlike uh, watercolor, which I'm kind of mimicking with the, the colors here. <clears throat> 
watercolor stains the paper and you have to react to what you have. And so it makes you a little bit more decisive. So that's why when you do a digital painting, you can't help but really show your personality because you have to be decisive as you're working. Okay, so the difference between this eye and this eye is the difference of the re refined painting layer. Right, so if I just show you that, you can see it's a little bit more detailed and it helps shape the face a little bit better. And ultimately, we're just building up textures and visual interest. Now, even though I'm starting with the eyes, I'm not trying to, to get them photorealistic or get them to an absolute finish at this point. It's just that's the focal point. So I want to kind of figure out my colors and my values there. My sketch isn't doing a whole lot for me right now because it's all in the background there. So I'm really just looking at the reference and squinting a lot to get the values. But the color choices are completely up to me because the reference is black and white. Because I'm referencing them on watercolor, they're going to have a unity to them. It can be fun to layer complementary colors. Like I said earlier, it's good to have little hints, even in just your base painting, of red in the thin parts of the face, around the nose, especially where the nostrils hit um, in the corners of the eyes, underneath the eyes. These bits of red and pink kind of make us mindful of the blood that's flowing through the skin when the skin gets thinner. And basically with these longer curved strokes that wrap around the face, I'm trying to combat the splotchiness, the kind of sponge paintingness of my base color layer, which is inevitable in, in digital painting when you're working with big brushes. And now I'm just making a lot of marks. So if we look at my history, this is why you need 500 history states. I've already filled up more than 500, right? Just with this special painting. So that's why we had to change that preference from 50, which is laughably small, to 500. So that does take up more um, computing capability, more processing capability on the, your computer. So when I digitally paint, I'm not trying to multitask and do other things on the computer. Because I need that brush to stay with me in real time. And that's a lot harder than just compositing photos for the computer to do. And the more complicated your brush, the more important that is. And I like doing portraits of older men because they're just not very nice looking. And they're very textured. They've got lots of little flaws in them. And I like my paintings to have that. So the next one I'm going to set up will be of a woman who's very attractive. And what's difficult about that is everything is, is smoother and more open. But I'm going to try to attack it with the same sort of energy. Your paintings are not about being flattering. They don't need to be. And I also like to paint dead people because they can't complain about it. So I'm not too worried about making them look good. I'm trying to get kind of an honest impression of them. I'm trying to capture the energy of them through the colors and the strokes I use and how I attack it. When digital painting is just painful, it's when you just kind of stop and you're slow and you seize up and you're not sure what to do. So just keep painting. 